Hi, I'm Femi O'K and you're in the stream. Today, in the Dominican Republic, thousands of stateless Haitians could face deportation. We'll hear about their fight to stay and why the government is taking action against them. Well, this story has been rumbling on for over a year now, but exploded on social media in the last week. Malika Balao, what, mm. what can you share with us? Right, well, the best way to depict what's really going on mm. despite to stay in the Dominican Republic is via pictures. So this okay. is a tweet from a radio station in the Dominican Republic, and it shows long lines of people who are waiting to register their status. And this is in San Cristobal, though this is happening in various other cities. And of course, we want you at home to weigh in on this conversation. I know you have a lot to say. You can share your opinions using the hashtag AJStream. Hi, my name is Graham Ong Webb. I'm a senior combat officer from Singapore and I'm in the stream. Is there a future for people of Haitian descent in the Dominican Republic? For generations, Haitians have crossed the border into the neighboring nation for better opportunities and work. Now, many came without formal permits and have spent their lives working and raising families there. Now, the Dominican Republic's message is approve you belong or face deportation. On Wednesday night, as a deadline to register their residency status passed, many fear what may come forced repatriation to Haiti and deportations without due process. So what should be done to address Haitians living in the Dominican Republic? With us to talk about this in Barte Libertad, Dominican Republic, Julio Luis is a Haitian Dominican who has been helping Haitians in his community obtain their residency permits. In Santo Domingo, we have Nassif Podomo. He's a constitutional lawyer and advocate for Haitian Dominicans. And also in Santo Domingo, Cristina Aguilla. She supports the government's plan and is the Dominican Republic's former ambassador to the United Nations. So good to have you all here in the mix. Julio, um, as a Haitian Dominican, do you see that there is a, a major issue in the Dominican Republic with there being a lot of undocumented residents? Is, is there a major problem? Uh, it's one of them. Uh not having the documentation uh, it's uh, take you to a place where you cannot uh, you cannot travel around the country you cannot go to a university uh -huh. uh, you cannot uh, do uh, like it's like your life it's uh, it's like you are in prison uh -huh. but you're free to work you're free to work just around where you live okay so that means that as you're traveling around, do people ask you for your papers often, ever? Often, often. Ah. If you wanna, if you wanna travel, for example, I live in Bate Libertad. Yes. So if you, if I wanna go to the city Santiago, so there is checkpoint, and to take the bus, the bus will ask you for paper. The bus will ask you for paper. Uh, if your location. Okay. If now, your location. Yeah. If, yes. Explain this looking Haitian thing for people who don't know Hispaniola well. What does looking Haitian look like? Black. If you're uh -huh. black. If you are black, uh, your location. For example, I have my uh, a friend from United States uh, who I met from the college. She went uh, over my house to visit the community. Yeah. Uh, then I take her to the bus station so she can travel to Santiago to back to the university. Yeah. The bus, the bus didn't want to to uh, to take her because they think her they think she was Haitian. Oh, and what did they she look like? Asking, uh, black. She is black. All she right. Black, dark, African American. Dark, dark brown. All right. Malika. Well, it's interesting you brought up looking Haitian, looking black, really. That's exactly what people say is driving this new policy. Not so new, uh, but the renewal of this policy. This is Brenda. She says this policy is motivated by racism 
and xenophobia. The only difference with these people is that they have Haitian ancestry. But on the other hand, we're hearing from someone in the Dominican Republic. This is Ivan, and he says, no, what this is is a developing nation of 10 million. 50% are poor, and we're being demanded to take 10 million more, and it's impossible. So, Christina, walk us through those two things, because we're seeing uh, something, uh, a, a lot of that sentiment, really, online on both sides of that debate. Yes, but I think uh, that it has nothing to do with skin color. Dominicans are not white. Dominicans are mixed blood. And it, the, the best thing is that you just walk around in the city of Santo Domingo. The thing when they see, they look Haitian is because of the accent. M most of them who are here and trying to get a document with this plan of the government don't even speak Spanish. So that is, I think, one of the signals that show people that these people are alien and that maybe they cross the border unlawfully. And if you take them aboard your bus or whatever, you may be fined by the, by the police or the, the, the migratory police. Oh, who, who I'm did? sorry. Go ahead. Uh, Go ahead. Yes. Um, for the accent, <laughs> is, uh, it's true uh, what Christina said. But uh, let's say you're going to take a, a bus to drive it. You don't want to speak. You don't need to speak. So uh, they won't see your accent. It's you waiting for a bus and the bus station. Mm. You just have to hop the, the bus. So it's not accent in that in that in that situation. Nassif, what's your take on the motivation between this tightening up of immigration laws and regulations in Dominican Republic? Well, it's a very complex issue and it's a two tired issue. I mean, first, we in the Dominican Republic, it's true, we have a lot, um, a lot of in the undocumented immigrants and their, their children who have been born here. Christina said that they crossed the border or that they have been encouraged to cross the border. I would say that they have been brought, a lot of them, by the Dominican state, which had its sugarcane industry based on the labor, on the cheap labor uh -huh. of Haitians. And then what did the Dominican state do? Well, the Dominican state um, pretended that they were not here when, when the sugarcane industry um, ended. Uh, it, it ignored uh, their situation. But also, who is responsible for the security of the border? Yeah. Who is supposed to have um, to stop human trafficking? It's the Dominican state. And in, in Santo Domingo, I saw the, the tweet by Ivan. I, I, Sometimes I, I talk to him on Twitter, even though I don't know him personally. Mm -hmm. But I'm sorry, no one is asking us to take on 10 million. That's a myth that the hard right has put forth in, in our country. No one is doing that. What, what happens is that the Dominican state cannot pretend to elude its responsibility. It has allowed for decades to um, this industry of human trafficking even, even the, the, the state so, so um, Nassif, employs we all, illegal We all labor. have a different idea, and, and we're trying to visualize what you mean by human trafficking, because in different parts of the world, it means different things. Are you talking about cheap labor? We're talking about people being stolen from, from Haiti, taken to the Dominican Republic. Can you make that very clear, what you mean yeah, by it's, that? It's um, uh, cheap labor. They, they do come voluntarily. Yeah. But they, when they cross the border, they don't do it on their own. They, right. they have accomplices on this side of the border. And a lot of the time, those accomplices are state agents. So it's very, it's very convenient for a supply, a source of cheap labor coming from Haiti, going to Dominican Republic. Let me show you this on my laptop here so you can see how close these two, two nations are. We've got Haiti here, and then we've got Dominican Republic here. Literally neighbors. There's a very tense relationship between those two parts of Hispaniola. Milika, where are you going to take us? Well, on the one hand, we're talking about migrants. On the other hand, though, there's a lot of people online saying this. This is Robin who says the risk in the Dominican Republic is that not only migrants are being arbitrarily deported, but Dominican-born people also. And this is followed up by Stephanie, who says these people were born in the Dominican Republic, raised there. Many of them speak Spanish as their first language. They participate in Dominican civil society, and they see themselves as Dominican. They are Dominican. So, Julio, does this resonate with you, what she's saying, that this is your home and you are Dominican? Yes, uh, absolutely. Um, but uh, some comments, and, and sometimes they try to make you feel different. 
like has uh, tricking you like Haitians or or foreign, you are not from here, um, and think if I'm not from here, where should I go? If I go to Haiti, where should I go? I have to start again my life. Who with who with with. Uh, I, I have family. Do I have family there? Do you, do you or feel do you're I Dominican or do you feel you're Haitian? Are you Haitian Dominican? How do you feel yourself? Haitian Dominican. All right. Yeah, I have to. Uh, to my my parents are Haitian, yeah. and I was I was born in, in Dominican Republic. Let me show you something here. Let me show I guess something here on my laptop. This is the one of the daily newspapers in Dominican Republic called El Dia. So one day we have this headline here about the Foreign Minister Navarro. He says that we won't hunt people down for repatriation here. And then in another headline in the same newspaper, we've got the uh, government will start repatriation of migrants on Thursday. Christina, this is very confusing. Uh, what is the government yeah. going to do? There was a deadline on Wednesday, and then Thursday yeah. is when, uh, technically, people who don't have documents, Today. yeah, they they could be yeah. sent back to, I don't know, no, back to, the, they could the, be the sent out of the Dominican Republic. This is quite confusing. Is the government going to be looking for them or not? No, the, the government made an official announcement saying yeah. that the deportations would start only 45 days after the deadline of the of the plan, so I don't know from where these newspapers get these headlines. Uh, I, I cannot accuse them of trying to sell paper because mm. those are free free newspapers. But the official announcement is that the repatriations will start over 45 days after the deadline. Right. There's there's a lot of information. Uh, yeah. Go go ahead. Uh, yeah. The deportations start today. And uh, the 45 days is to to drop all the documentation that uh, it will cry for the people who had uh, the chance to to uh, to register to register in the process. If you did register in the process, you have 45 days from today to uh, to uh, find all the papers you need to to accomplish the, the, the process. But if you did not uh, register, you didn't have the opportunity to register, yeah. you may be uh, deported. All right, so you know people who have been deported. What happened to them, Julio? How, how does that process uh, play out? There are two group of people. Mm -hmm. um, for example, if you, uh, if you were born here and you get deported, that's very hard for you because you will be in Haiti, you don't know who to contact, and if you don't have cell phone to call your family, or you don't have money to live there until you can have the opportunity to go back uh, to Dominican Republic again, to your country, it will be very hard for you. But if you are Haitian, you, you were in Haiti, then you, you came here. So it's not, has uh, difficult for you, but it's still it's uh, it, it a little bit easier for you because you will be there and you already know the country. Yeah. But you will go there and you will live. You will live all your stuff in Dominican Republic. Your house. Your, I'd like your... to say something. What what Hulu is saying is very important. Important because as I said a while back, this is a too tired issue. On the one hand, there's the issue of the deportation of the illegal immigrants or undocumented immigrants, people who came over the border and who overstayed their permit or who came without a permit. Then there is the underlying issue. And it's a, there, there was a ruling on September of 2013 in which the Constitutional Tribunal in the Dominican Republic stripped of their nationality the children of undocumented immigrants. Why do I say that they were stripped of their nationality? Well, because the Dominican constitution up until January of 2010, when that was changed, stated that if you were born in Santo Domingo, you had the right to nationality. 
with the only two exceptions of people who were the, the children of registered diplomats and uh, people whose parents had, were in transit in, in the Dominican Republic. Well, what the Constitutional Tribunal said was, well, transit includes people who came over without documents, even if they have stayed in Santo Domingo for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. And so their children, who are people who have never crossed a border, who have never been anywhere else, have been stripped of their nationality. All right. And, now, and see, the, this is why the, this the, subject the, is so complex. Some members of our community are also talking about this as well. Malika? Well, this is another tweet from Ivan, who is very interested in this story. And Christina, he brings up a point that I want to share with you. He says their government, meaning the Haitian government, hasn't wanted to help them at all. They're not giving them the docu documentation they need. They want the spotlight, and that's, of course, his view. But I am wondering, what's the communication like between the governments of uh, Haiti and the Dominican Republic in trying to solve this issue so that there's uh, the least amount of impact on civilians? Well, right now, uh, I think diplomacy is, is, is functioning. And I think that we should be, leave diplomats the care to solve certain issues because there is a lot of noise going around this problem these days. The Dominican Republic uh, offered Haiti to cooperate in the process of helping the Haitian government to issue the proper documentation for uh, its nationals that were the, on this side of the border. The thing is that uh, if the numbers are so important. As Nasset said before, this, this problem has been gone, going on for decades. People crossing the, crossing the border on totally undocumented, and that is not the fault of the Dominican Republic. The Dominican Republic has to document its own nationals, but the Haitian state failed for decades, and maybe for two centuries, to uh, assert uh, the fundamental right. So you the feel minimum you feel right that the Haitian to, to, to its own national. So Christine, you feel that Haitians failed, not the Dominican Republic for actually having an immigration policy that actually was well. The Dominican practical. Republic also. I I think that this is a, a joint uh, responsibility. Right. On right. one side, because it, uh, it, it it allowed the the government to ease the pressure of population jobless that mm. cross the border that then uh, Christina, what, that, what, that what about what would you say to a, a youngster, a young person whose um, parents were working in Dominican Republic? They were born in the Dominican Republic. They don't yeah. have papers. What should happen to that young person? Well, uh, that was settled by, by a new act that was enacted last year, yeah. saying that all these people that were on, on, on duly registered in the Dominican Civil Registry would, would be given uh, documentation and would be asserted right. as Dominicans. So okay. I think that the problem was that, uh, solved uh, to that extent. Let me show you something, because I, I, I'm wondering about this tension between Haiti, Dominican Republic, and, and what mm -hmm. this immigration policy is doing to communities who live together in Dominican Republic. There's something that I spotted, and this came from early April. This is a mob going after Haitians. It's really ugly, and some of it is quite disturbing. I want you to have a look at this, though. So Julio, we've been talking about this as an issue with documentation and registration, perhaps some uh, tension between um, Dominican Republicans and also Haitians or people of Haitian descent. What are we seeing down on the ground? Is, is, is that making thing, life very tense? Is that unusual, that mob attacking Haitians there in Dominican Republic? Or, or have you seen that happen often? Um. That problem happens, but not not really often. It's mm -hmm. uh, if depend on the on the uh, like on the city where you live. Mm 
Yeah. In some city, if uh, a Haitian commit a crime, all the Haitian will pay. Like, like in this video, you could see it's one Haitian did something, and maybe they didn't find that one Haitian, and they systematically think that all the Haitian need to pay for uh -huh. for that problem. But that doesn't happen in all the cities. Sure. For example, where I, where I live, uh, that that uh, doesn't happen. But yes, in some uh, places in the country, that that case uh, happen often. Doesn't happen everywhere, but because it does happen, we're getting tweets like this from Jose. He says, I feel ashamed of my country right now. We're talking about families with roots and the humanitarian base. This is a video comment from Amanda, and she wants to know what this is going to do uh, for the future of the Domin Dominican Republic. Have a listen. I also have a lot of questions about what this is going to mean for workers of perceived Haitian descent in the Dominican Republic. Uh, are they going to be further discriminated against? Uh, is there going to be even less regulation or less way of granting them workers' rights? And also, what does it mean for so many of the Haitian women who cross the border, who face sexual violence? who go into Dominican hospitals seeking attention and they're mistreated. So I'll pass that to you, Julio, because you might have friends who might be affected. Um, what are your thoughts on what Amanda said in her video comment? Yes, I have a lot of that every day. Um, I help out with uh, a Yale University who did uh, a research in my community about, about the same topic. Uh, this is very hard. Uh, the results are very uh, stressful and people are, they don't have, they don't feel like they have any future. Um, they don't have any future. Some, the news or the government may say they will uh, try to change that, but I, I never seen that. In my case, I was born in the hospital in Esperanza and it's still really hard for me to get my my uh, Dominican ID, and I can say I am one of the victims mm. uh, in that in that uh, situation. Christina, I'm just more concerned about what the fallout might be from this tightening up of immigration policy in Dominican Republic. Have a look here on my laptop. This is a tweet that we got earlier on today. Little Haiti right now. This is in uh, Miami, Florida. Haitian lives matter. And then people here holding signs saying Dominican, li Dominican lives also matter. Boycott. For, for the case. I, I mean, yeah, I, I understand here, but there's this 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 campaign now going on. Nobody, to boycott nobody, the Dominican yes. Republic. Yes, I, I I I think that it's shameful. Nobody is talking about Dominican the, the human rights of Dominicans. Nobody's talking about poor Dominicans. Nobody's talking about the fact that forty percent of the public health budget goes to, to taking care of Haitians. Dominican, yeah, I mean, Haitian Where women did we get these come numbers? to give birth in our hospitals. And they, they this, is, this is, these figures have no basis whatsoever. It's like but the hard right has been Pisa, pretty convinced Nancy, that Dominican Pisa people Pisa that we have been invaded for, for 200 I'm years or 150 anything. years. I'm sorry, Christina, let me finish, please. I know I interrupted you, but this is important because you're throwing figures out there that you have no basis for. I mean, like, no, it's, those are it's amazing. Figures, In the Dominican you know Republic, we, we've had the hard right say to everybody here that there are two million Haitians in the Dominican Republic. That has been shown to be a complete and absolute exaggeration because uh, even before the Constitutional Tribunal ruling, we, we had a census, a type of census, and the result was that we have in Santo Domingo 680,000 foreigners of all nationalities. And they included there the Dominicans that are descendants of Haitians. So it's, it's, it's important that, that we start taking at least figures on uh, seriously, because we might disagree on a lot of things, but we have to be able to, to, to talk about the You're same thing. You're listening to Nassif Podomo. And, and we also have another. Julio Lewis and Christina Aguria. And Nassif, we're going to take you to the post show. I know there's so much more to talk about. Really appreciate you, Christina, Julio, being on the show. Stream.outazira.com. See you online.
again, this is the Streams Online post show. We're talking about people of Haitian descent in the Dominican Republic and why many are fearing the threat of deportation. Let's get right back to Nassif. Nassif, we were right at the end of the main TV show um, and I know you had something you wanted to add. We'll come back to you in just a moment. But first, we were talking about this boycott campaign that that's, uh, seems to be getting some, some momentum outside of the Dominican yeah, Republic. Most of the tweets that we're seeing are from outside of the Dominican Republic, naturally. Mm. It has about 1,500 mentions as of um, my speaking right now, and it's boycott DR. But then we also see tweets like this. This is Dynamo who says, this boycott will just create more hate. It won't resolve anything, and it's bitter. So Julio, I know that you have thoughts on, on the boycott. What do you think people should be doing? I think we should try and find another uh, we trying to do uh, we are, we trying to we have to take action not to 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 plan more more hate there is too many hate in, in that in that situation mm. to be uh, speaking on boycott boycott won't solve the problem I think we should find the way of prob of uh, to solve the problem and the problem is uh, can be solved by uh, coming in the ground. Because sometimes when we see, when we watch the news or wherever we, we are, we, 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 we have a thoughts about some uh, situation. But if we come to the ground, and, and I think together we can find uh, a, better, uh, a better way to, to uh, help out this situation or to, to go to go on with that situation. Let's just revisit where we left off at the end of the main TV show. Christina was saying nobody mentions the poor Dominicans. Nassif, you had pushback. Uh, um, we were just at the very end of the show. Can you remember what point it was that you were trying to make? Well, they, they were talking about, she, she was talking about the, the supposedly 40% of the health services in Santo, in Santo Domingo goes out to Haitians. That, 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 that figure has no basis. They can't point to a place where it says so, where they have taken this data. It's the same thing they've done for decades. They've been saying that we have 2 million undocumented immigrants in Santo Domingo. It's not true. These are exaggerations that try to buttress their arguments. But, I mean, like I said, we can have different opinions on, on, on this subject and on any subject, but we cannot and that's resort it. to just, exaggeration. Just to add something, I, I, nobody... I have to jump in because there's no exaggeration. You only need to go in the provinces and see in the east how many are there. There are already towns where there are no, no Dominicans in the border. There are towns where there are no Dominicans left. So there's no exaggeration. Where do you maybe get the this num information? number. This is maybe not the true. I have people. I have people who write to my to my Facebook. This is to, this to, is to, not to true. To and you say that you, you throw out east. a number. You say that forty percent. You say that forty percent of the, the state health, budget for health services health goes to goes illegal to immigrants or undocumented immigrants. And then when I ask you for where did no, you get health, the figure, you tell health. me. That I have to go and see in the town. No, no, this that's is, not no, a number. No, no, Th no. This, this, for the, this is for anecdotal the evidence. Health. If anything, this at has all. been published in the newspapers, Nassif. I am not inventing anything no, no, about no. the numbers. I want to know I, if this. I asked you, where do you get this figure? I, I, I'll tell for you where you get this public figure. Health you get this figure from the, from the same papers, place. Official, you got the official figure of two million undocumented immigrants. Nassim, no, that, and, Nassim have, and Christina, not, Julio wanted to add something. I have something. not said Chris, anything about the million. Just, just, I spoke about the yes. public oh, health. It's in the papers, Christina. Christina and Nassim. It's in the papers, just the hard drive. Take a, take a breath oh, for a just, moment. Take a breath for a moment. I hear the points yes. we are disagreeing on. I just want to add to Julio. Julio, what did you want to add? I wanted to add that uh, I've heard that news and that uh, the public heard and stuff go for ha for Haitians, but I haven't heard the millions that the government made in the sugarcane where they were committing crimes with the life of Haitians working in the sugarcane. All the millionaires uh, people became 
uh, in the sugarcane, uh, that situation brings all the Haitians here. And yep. now nobody wants to face it, neither the Haitian government, uh, the Haitian government, neither the Dominican uh, government. And all of them got rich in that. Christina, I want to throw something at you. This is a question from Robin on Twitter. She says, this policy would be reasonable if the government would respect human rights and international standards during the deportations. And she continues here saying, that means respect of clear proceedings, such as giving people the possibility to challenge their deportations. She says that's essential. Is that a possibility right now? Well, we don't have any, any regulations on that issue. I, I, I must say that I was a, a lawyer in France for 30 years, and uh, no, for 20 years, because I lived in France 30 years, and I was a deportation lawyer. They have procedures where the, the deportee can challenge the procedure, but let me tell you, it is to no avail, because you go to one judge, then the second to the appellate judge, and the result is the same. It's only the due process is respected. We don't have in the Dominican legislation anything uh, that can be equivalent to a judici judicial uh, challenge of the, the, the deportation. Christina, Christina uh, as, a, as a legal and, scholar, do you not find that objectionable? Sure, of course, but I am not the lawmaker. Right. Okay. All right. Um, this seems I, like... I'd like uh, to throw this in. Yeah, the Dominican yeah. Constitution, in, in Article 69.10, says that due process has to be followed in any procedure by the state. And this includes, obviously, deportations. I mean, like, that's the law. So if in any case you want to say that a law should be applied, deportation is an administrative procedure. So you apply the administrative law. That's it. Nassif, Nassif, let me just so ask this, you something. This, 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 that's this, exactly that. Christina Nassif, before I get two lawyers arguing with each other and then, I, I, then none of us yeah. understand what you're talking about. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're getting very close to that point right now. <laughs> Step back from the edge. <laughs> um, this seems problematic. Obviously, there's an issue with undocumented residents in Dominican Republic. How you deal with that? Um, is proving to be uh, difficult. How do we get out of this situation? I'm going to ask that to Christina, to Nassif, to Julio. I'm just, I just want a sentence, really, a thought that you can share with us, your take on how do we get out of this, Nassif? Well, I, I would have to agree with Christina that the Haitian government has been very responsible. So I think that the solution should be basically a Dominican solution, at least at this point in time. Mm -hmm. I would, first of all, control the border and human trafficking because no, no process, no deportation process, fair or unfair, is going to solve this problem unless you end human trafficking at the border. Mm -hmm. And after that, I would, with more calm that has been done, uh, more time, I would try to solve uh, this issue. I'm not saying that the, the, the government does not have the, the right to do this. Yeah. It does. And it frankly has done it in a, a much more... All right, sum um, up, Mr. Lawyer. This is way. the end of your sentence. Okay. All right. Uh, I, Christina, I, how, how do we, I briefly, would, how do we get out well, of this? Yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. Right what yeah. he is saying. But I, need that all, I think that we need also very narrow cooperation between the two countries. The right. Dominican Republic has to um, advance some uh, migratory policy and, and uh, yeah, public policy, right. and also and and, the, and in the, the mean in the meantime, Christina, are people going to be scooped up and then and taken out of the Dominican Republic because they haven't registered, they don't have papers? No. Are they still? Is that still going to happen to them? No, it's a challenge for a state yeah. to have a, an unknown population, undocumented, and on the territory. It's right. even a security matter. So this challenge is extremely difficult to solve for, for the government. Let me just ask and Julio the, if he's got any ideas, because he's actually helping people to try yes. and get registered. Julio, what's your idea about how do you get out of this? Um, it's not an ideal situation. Lower the, the cost. The, a passport of Haitian, it, cost too much for Haitian. Haitian get paid uh, five to seven dollars per day. 
and a passport it can be it can be uh, seventy dollar, like seventy dollar, and the visa it's right. like uh, two hundred and fifty thousand uh, fifty pes a uh, dollar. Right. It's, wow. It's too, It's more. It's more than what a Haitian can make in a month. Wow. Okay. So they 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 will never invest in documentation while they have a like cost a so family. much. Wow. Yeah, they have family to feed. They have. Uh, personal needs and two and five hundred per day five uh, I mean five dollars per yeah. day that is the and most that, practical suggestion I've heard very practical yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> lawyers lawyer just event. just saying lawyers that was a practical suggestion <laughs> <laughs> Malika what, 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 what do you uh, want to leave us with before well, the lawyers no, sue me <laughs> there are no suggestions for how to get out of this but right. there is some disappointment mm. some ending thoughts from Jeff he says it's unbelievable to note that the DR can't see that they both share a common struggle and deserve to act as one but there's also criticize, criticism on Haiti as well this is Chugon, Chugoner who says may this be a wake-up call for the Haitian government they need to begin the process of nation building I really like the way we've had this conversation because you go online, it's a little hysterical. A little bit. Some of it, uh, some inaccuracies going on, even in newspapers in Dominican Republic. So for that, for the clarity in this conversation, I have to thank our guests, Julio Lewis, Nassif Podoma, and Christina Agria. Thank you so much for bringing light and sanity on this debate. And thank you, our audience, for watching. See you next time.